Good morning, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to start um, with UV maps. Um, and I'll explain what they are, how they differ from projection maps, and how to use them. And they can be used in a variety of different ways. So I have both a demonstration and I have some videos to show you. The videos um, are available on YouTube, so they will be in our YouTube folder. Um, but right now I'm going to start with my own demonstration to show you the difference between a projection map and a UV map. Um, one, one of the, the main differences. Okay, so to start with, I just have a simple plane here. Um, and I have subdivided it. And the only reason I have subdivided it, you don't need to subdivide it to have a UV map, but it's because I want to twist or bend or do something to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Q to create, create a new, whoops, make sure that it's selected. Hit Q to create a new, oh, come on. Oh, I need to save it, that's why. Sorry, I haven't saved it yet. File, save as, and we'll call it UV demo. That would be helpful to do that. So let me go to my desktop and let's go into, I have a couple of content folders depending on what I'm working on. So here's the content for this semester. Make sure that it's linked to that. There we go. Okay, so this is my UV demo. So what I want to do is I want to create a new surface. Oh, what do you mean there's no polygon? Oh, because I have a point selected. Never mind. There we go. Q. There we go. New surface. If you have points selected, you can't create a new surface. So anyway, I'll just call this flag. because I'm going to use a checker checker flag for this. And I'll just click uh, OK. You don't see anything right now, but I'm going to go ahead and go to the surface editor. And we can either use the node editor, but for right now, instead of principled DSDF, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use standard just for the heck of it. OK, so this is what we've been doing all along. And I'm going to hit T for texture. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load my image map. That's what I'm going to apply to this. Now, so I'll go ahead. We want it planar. And by default, it's being projected along the z-axis, which is what we want. Okay. And if it doesn't work, then just try the other axis, axis, ax, axes and see. So I'm going to go ahead and load the image. And it should come up here. Uh, i got to go back to my default root bolt again. Let's go to desktop. Let's go to, uh, come on, come on, come on, content fall 2020, because that's what I'm doing here. And I want my images. And it should be, here's my checkerboard. OK. So there it is. And remember, by default, um, when you apply projection maps, they automatically tile, right? Okay, so if you if we wanted a, a tiled a checkerboarded floor or a tiled floor, this is you know one possibility of what it can look like. Okay, but I don't. What I want to do is I want to reset. Okay, um, reset so that it doesn't, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to automatic sizing so that it stretches. Okay. So this is what we've been doing so far. But the problem with this that I have is that if I hit T for move, and you can see this because it's in textured mode. You know, if I looked at it in textured wired, you can see all the wires. If I looked at it in shaded view, okay, um, let's look at it. shade smooth, you don't see the texture. So we want to see it in textured view. And remember, we're in modeler right now. So now if I hit T for move and I have move selected and I move it, notice that the texture is sliding around the object. I don't want that, I want it fixed. 
Now, as soon as we send this over to layout, it's not a problem. It will be fixed. So that's why typically um, when I'm creating textures, I create just solid colors as placeholders and then do all the refine surfacing in, in layout. But in the event that I need to use uh, a UV map, then that's what we're gonna do, which is a little bit different. So to, do, to create UV maps, this is what you do. And you'll see the difference. Now, before I do that, um, let me go ahead and let me use something like twist to show you what happens in another way when we do this. So if I go to modify, and I select um, twist from here, maybe. And from the side view, if I go to twist this, like so, and we look at this, look at how distorted the checkerboard is. That's no good. And even if I were to go back in there and select double sided, which isn't a bad idea. So let me go back here and um, go back to the surface editor. And I only have one texture and I'm going to go ahead and select double sided. And when we look at that other side here, it is all distorted. That's something that you don't want. And this would be even for a very simple map, uh, a really good reason for using a UV map. So let's undo this, take this back and we're going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that everything fits in here. We can look at that. We can see what we're doing. Let's move this down, the numeric requester, get it out of the way. So here's our top view. Here's our back view. Here's our right view. And here's the perspective view. So what we want to do is I want to create a UV map for this. So to do that, we come down here in the lower right hand corner where it says T for texture. Okay, that's what, where we create our UV maps. So that's one of the ways. So I'm going to go ahead and go to um, um, where it says none. I want to create a new map. And it gives us some options here. We want the initial value. Right now, we um, I'm going to use the map type, which is similar to what we use for projection, is it's planar because that is a simple plane. That's all we need. Okay. But you'll notice we have cylindrical, spherical, and atlas. Okay, so right now we just need planar. That's fine. And you need to know about which axis you're going to project it. And it's going to be the Z axis. Okay, because right here, this is the Z axis, which is perpendicular to the picture plane. And I want it projected on to that axis. Okay. Now I'm just going to use automatic here and we can set as default UV map and we can use live update if we want for later on. And I'm going to go ahead and select create. And you can see new map texture was created. So now I can close this. Well, where do I see what this map looks like? Well, typically we look at it in the upper left hand corner, but you don't have to. It can be any corner. And what I'm going to do here is instead of top I'm going to select UV texture. And you can see that it pretty much mirrors what we have over there. Okay. It's just a square. It's not, even though this is a rectangle, okay, maps are always perfect squares. So now what we can do is we can go back to the surface editor. Okay. So let's go to the surface editor. And again, I'll go to texture, but instead of image map, okay, I'll use image map, but instead of planar, I'm going to use select UV. And notice that it, it goes to blank. Well, you have to select the UV texture. And you can have multiple UV textures depending on what you want to do with your, your object. So right now it says UV map none. Well, I'm going to go ahead and select texture because that was what I created. I didn't name it which I should have done is like checkerboard. And now you'll notice that it is mapped on here. Okay, it looks the same as before. So now I can go ahead and I can close that and I can go ahead and I can close this. And we can come back here and I can now, let's go ahead again, I'll hit T for move. Now I'm gonna move it, but notice that the texture moves with it. So it is now 
in effect, fixed onto the surface. And that's what you want, okay? And where it becomes especially um, important, and you need to do this early on because then as your model builds, that texture map um, transforms to, um, to fit the new model that you created, okay? So um, we'll get into something more complex in a minute, which would be, for example, the Atlas. But so for right now, how does that apply? So again, instead of move, let's go ahead and let's use twist again and let's watch what happens. So from the right view, I'm gonna go ahead and twist this like so. You know, we could also use a displacement map and we'll, we will be covering that next week probably. Notice that it doesn't distort as it did before. That's what you want. Now, to try to use a projection map with this would be really, really near impossible. That's why, in certain instances, you do need to use, especially for image maps. If it's just a solid color, it doesn't really matter. Or if it's a procedural, it doesn't matter. But for image maps, to make sure that they, are, they fit nicely onto the surface, even when you distort them or when you use displacement maps and create mountains and valleys, or um, if you want kind of a, a ripply blanket or sheet or something like that, then this would be a case for using that, okay? So that's the first one that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna undo that, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this again. And I'm gonna create a brand new file now. And I'm going to show you a different way of creating a displacement map. And this is going to be, for example, something a little bit more complicated, like a box of cereal. It's still, it's not organic, but it's, um, uh, you know, we have multiple sides. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and this is saved. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to create a new object here. And instead of UV texture here, I'll make this the top view again so we can see what we're doing. And so as an example, for those of you who are taking uh, or will be taking Chris Wilson's uh, animation class, uh, you will, in the past, he's had you um, animate a dancing uh, cereal box. Now, when we switch to Blender, I'm not sure what he'll be doing. But as an example, this is what he's done in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to um, create a box. It's about the same proportions as what you would see on a, um, a cereal box. Um, it won't be exact, but you'll get the idea. So from the top view, I'll click and I'll drag like so. And now I don't need all of those um, segments that I had before. I just need one segment for each. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click and drag. Let's move this down like so. Yeah, move this up a little bit. So it's about the proportions of a cereal box, right? And that's it, okay? So there we have it. So there's our cereal box. Now, if I go ahead and I fix this, um, one way of applying a different image to each side would be to, um, under the polygon mode, select each polygon and hit Q and say front, you know, cereal box front, cereal box back, cereal box left side, cereal box right side, and so on and so forth. And you'd have six different surfaces. That's one way of doing that. But instead, we're going to create a UV map for this. Okay. So, and this would be this could be used um, for characters, especially simple character animation. If you have you know a character with basic parts, that you have a head, you have um, a torso, maybe pants, arms, hands, that sort of thing. And if you broke each one down into a separate surface or a separate part, then you would be able to create a UV map based on. Uh, on that. So what I'm going to do now is similar to what I had done before. I'm going to go ahead and hit T for texture and I want it new. Okay. And I'm going to name it. I don't want it texture one anymore. I'll name it cereal box. Okay. 
Okay. Now I don't want it planar. Okay. That's a map type. It's not a cylinder. It's not a sphere. I want it to be atlas. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to unwrap it. Um, maybe this is a bad example, but it would, well, it would be if you were to take a cereal box and basically destroy it or, you know, but not tear it up, but break it apart into a single flat image. That's what it's going to do. It's um, not unlike taking an animal and when you skin an animal and flatten it out. It's, it's pretty much um, very much like that. So subpatch interpol interpolation, we can use linear. If we were using subpatches instead, I would probably want to select subpatch instead. But this is linear, so I'm using linear right now. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll select create. And you can see down at the bottom, it says new map serial box was created. So now I can close this. So now let's take a look and see what this looks like. So instead of top view, I'm going to go ahead and select UV texture. And there you go. There you have it. I can zoom in here and move this over. And here it is. It's, you know, all the six sides have been broken apart. We have our top and bottom, our left and right, and our front and back. And I don't know which one is which right now. It's not labeled. So the next step is to find an image and to map it on here. But before I do, I'll hit Q. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I guess I should save this, huh? And I'll name this um, Serial Box UV. So I'm going to go ahead and select um, Save, Save Object As, and I'm going to name it Serial Box UV. Or just Serial Box should be fine. Okay. There we go. So now my object is saved. And this is what the UV map looks like, but now we're ready to map it. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit Q and we'll call it again, serial box. And we'll just make it a different color just for the heck of it. Uh, we didn't have, we, I didn't do that before, but uh, maybe just kind of a, a yellowish color here. Okay, so that's the default color for it, but that won't appear in a couple of minutes. So what I need to do now is I need to bring up my surface editor. And since I have created a surface for it, we want to, and I could on a later date, I will show you how to use um, the edit node, um, node editor for, for something like this. But again, for right now, I'm just gonna go back and kind of go old school and go standard. And that takes that texture color away and I'll go ahead and I'll hit T for texture. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up an image map and I'm going to go ahead and load it. So instead of planar, um, I'm going to select UV. And um, under UV map, I want serial box. Now remember, it still has that other one texture that I created from before. Okay. So I don't want it to repeat. This is going to be set, reset, reset. It's going to be fine. And now we need to load an image. Now I have already scanned an image for this. So I'm going to load the image. And if I scroll down here, it should be, here's my Ritz box. It's not a serial box, but I, I created a Ritz box for this. And notice that everything fits perfectly. Notice how it wraps, but part of it is backwards, okay? Now, why does it do that? Because now, instead of none, if I come back here and I say Ritz box, um, it's a Photoshop file, you can see that I've already mapped it onto here. Okay, so what I would have to do in order to make this work, let's go ahead and select none to show you how this has to be finished, um, how you get to this result here. Okay, so I've sort of jumped ahead right now. So I'll select none. So in order to get this to work, what you need to do is, is understand that only the areas inside these rectangles, rectangles are what will be viewed. So 
you know, how do you know the size and the proportions of all of this? So to do that, we're going to go ahead and let me close some of these windows so we can see a little bit better what we're doing here. And even I don't like closing the numeric requester, I'll move that up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to display this image in full view like so. And I got to get my head and the numeric requester out of the way. <clears throat> and what I need to do is you'll notice the grid in the background here. That it's still it's it's contained within a square format. Well, what I want to do is I want to um, create a um, uh, uh, a screenshot of this. So I think on my I have something here that I can do that. And if I don't, I need to bring that up. So here's for a screenshot, I can click here. Now, you can do this a little bit differently if you want. Um, I'll just go ahead and I'm going to click here, get it really tight so that I get just the grid, nothing else. Now, I could do this in Photoshop, but I'm not. But I want to just create a nice tight screenshot of this square that is what I need. Okay. So now I can go ahead and I can capture it. And it's now on my desktop here. So now what I need to do is I need to go to Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up Photoshop. And that's here. I want to bring it back. Let me go ahead and bring Photoshop. Can everybody see this or not? I need feedback from you guys. Yes, no. Um, yeah, you can see it. So you can see my Photoshop file. I was concerned that maybe um, wasn't accessible. So now what I want to do is I want to open that up. So I'm going to go to file, open. And I'm going to go to my desktop because that's probably where I saved it. And here's that screenshot that I created just a moment ago. Okay, and I don't want all of those windows up. So I've got a window, a range, I just want um, tab, consolidate all into tabs. So that's what I need. Okay, so now I have my image. And because I've already created that scan, I can go ahead and I can open it up. So I'll also open that up. So I'm going to go to file open. Okay, and I'm going to go back into my content folder for fall 2020. And I'm going to go inside images, which is where I already saved it. So you do have to have some understanding of of Photoshop. So here is my Ritzbox PSD. So I'll go ahead and I'll open that. And you can see that I've already mapped it onto there. But I had to do six separate scans, one for each side. And you'll notice that it matches. So if I turn on the background image, okay, you see how each one of those images is matching that? Okay, if I were to take and I have each one on a separate layer and I go ahead and I move, okay, see how the box has been resized and fits neatly with inside that grid. So that's what you have to do. Okay, so let me undo that, get it back. And you do that for each side. And once that's completed, then you can save it as a Photoshop file, save it as, save it as a JPEG or as a last resort. Um, save it as uh, an old style TGA file. Okay. And then once that's been saved, then you probably want to turn off, as I did here, that background image, because that's just for placement only. And that's all. Now you can go back and um, we can go back to Lightwave. So let's go back here. And now with that image saved, I can go ahead and I can I'm bringing in my Photoshop file. Okay, so that's on there. 
And now I can go ahead and I can zoom out of this. And you can see that it fits on here really, really nicely. But you'll notice the Ritz box itself is in there backwards. So I have an issue that I need to fix. I need to, need to either go back to Photoshop, which I can do, and I can flip it, or I can try to do it from here. So let me try to do it from here. And if it doesn't work from here, then I would have to go to back to Photoshop and I would have to flip the horizontal and then save it and bring it back in and then it would be correct. Why it, it, it flips it like this, I don't know. So it's not foolproof. You can see that this bottom one is backwards too, probably. Yeah, it is. So, but let's just focus on this one. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to select this um, particular poly. Okay, and now if I hit key for move and I move it, notice that they're all connected. So if I'm sure you've seen lots of television commercials or commercials on the web where you have, you know, you know, dancing products, you know, and things that kind of squish and morph and get distorted and stuff, well, that's how it's done. Okay, because they're all connected to one another. And if I were to rig it and add bones to it, I could have it walk, you know, back and forth across the table and dance and do whatever I want with it. Okay. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut it. Okay. And then I'm going to paste it. And when you do that, it remembers the exact position of it. But again, if I select the polygon, so if I hit if I go back and I don't want to move, let's turn off move. If I select that polygon and I hit T for move, notice that it's no longer connected. So I'm going to go back and now from the top view, so let's switch from uh, UV map to top view. With that polygon selected, I'm going to hit rotate. Okay, Y for rotate. And I want it to rotate from the um, center of the selection. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to rotate it 180 degrees. So just flip it around like so. And I'm looking in the lower left hand corner for the exact angle to make sure that it is exactly 180 degrees. Now it's just remember that by default, all polygons when you uh, apply them like this are one sided. Okay. So now that it's done, I can turn off rotate. And what I want to do is I need to reconnect it with, with, the, with the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit M for merge. And I'm just going to leave it automatic. And it should um, remove four points. And it says no points eliminated. So let me go ahead and deselect that. That's where my problem lied. So I'm going to hit M for merge again. And now it says four points eliminated. So I need to deselect it first. And I forgot to do that. So now what I can do is I can select that polygon and I can flip the surface normals. So if I hit F for flip, now it's right reading. So this is one way of doing it. I can either go back to Photoshop and flip it, or I can um, do that inside Lightwave like so. And now I have um, my cereal box perfectly matched. It looks pretty real. Okay, I can light it, I can view it from any angle. I can create any number of possible product shots from this and, um, and create a really nice piece. Okay, so there we have Atlas. So how are we doing on time? We have lots of time. We have, I've only spent a half an hour on this. So let me go ahead and make sure that everything here is saved. Okay, so now we have a couple more things that we need to do. And this is, um, I'm gonna start the demonstration for you and then we're gonna switch and I'm gonna show you some, some videos on this. There are different ways of unwrapping the boxes that we can take a look at. But what if you want to do something more organic, like a head, and, and get it wrapped? So let me show you how to do that. So again, I'm going to create a new object here. OK. 
Okay, and I'm going to open up an existing one. So let me make sure that everything fits nicely here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load an object. And where I'm going to find that object is I might have to download it. Um, 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 I want Terran head. So he is, you know what, I'm going to have to download him from here. So let me cancel that. I apologize. I thought I was really prepared this morning. So I need to come back here and I need to go to my, where I have it saved for all of you guys too. I'm going to go back to art 195. So let's go back here on my drive. Let's go to art 195. This is for the fall of 2020. So this is actually, this kind of is working out so you can find the same thing for yourself. And I'm going to go to classic content and I'm going to go to objects and I need to go to, there should be one for heads here. We have human. So that might be where it's located if I'm remembering correctly. So let's, yeah, here's the heads inside the heads folder. And there should be one called Karen head. I'll just use it. And here it is here. So I'm going to select Karen head and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to download it. Okay. And I'm just going to download it and I'm going to put it in my content folder. Okay. So I don't have to go looking for it later on. And I don't want it in the image folder. I want it in my object folder. Okay, so we'll put Karen head in there and save it. Okie doke. So now I can go ahead and move this back up. And we can go ahead and I can load it. So that's where you will find. And if you notice, there's tons of other models that, for you to take a look at under classic content that is no longer available in Lightwave, by the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and load object. And I should be able to find it. There it is, Turin head Lightwave object. Open them up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit um, A to fit all. So here he is, like so. That's Turin head. So how do we map his head? Okay, first thing that you want to do is make sure that he's perfectly centered in the middle of your universe. Okay, so if you recall, you hit on my laptop, I hit FN and then F2 so that he's perfectly centered. And now I go ahead and hit A to make sure that it's centered again. Okay, so here we have Terran head. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create another um, UV map for this. And it will be initially, um, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but it will be a little bit awkward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T and I'm going to leave it just as is. So he's facing back, hit T. And what I want to do is create a new map. Okay, you'll notice that I have Terran head already. So I want a new one. And this is going to be, because um, this is saved with, with the object. So let me take a look at it just for the heck of it. And let's select Terran head for a moment. And I'm going to switch from top view to um, UV texture and see what he looks like. And this is what he looks like, but this isn't how I want to do this. Because notice, I mean, it can be done, but notice that he's shifted over to the left. Some of his, um, his face goes outside the grid and part of his face, you know, you know, the part of the ear is over here and part of the ear is over here. So that doesn't work too well. So let's create another one. So I'm going to go ahead again, instead of UV texture, I'm going to go back to top view again. So we look here, see what we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a brand new texture for him. Okay, so under T, instead of Terran head, I'm going to go ahead and select new. And I'll call it Terran head two. Okay, Karen head two. And I'm gonna make the same mistake as I made before, okay? 
that um, instead, uh, I'm going to leave it, him positioned where he's at, okay, with his his um, his head facing forward like that. And I don't want Atlas, but you can think of him basically as a cylinder, okay, because we want it wrapped around his head. And it would be wrapped, if we look at the top view, that's along the, the y-axis so that it wraps around it like so. Now we can go ahead and we can select create. So notice that it's been created. And now what we can do is we can switch again from top view to um, UV texture. Now we need to select the texture and um, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And this is just gonna look like what we did before. Now this says none, but I want, um, Oh, because we don't have anything. Yeah, we want that UV texture. That's the one that we just created. Okay. So let's do this a little bit differently. And now what you need to do for this is similar to what I did with the box stop, is that you need to, you know, zoom in on this like so, so that we just see a single frame, make it nice and big. And you're going to do a screenshot and it can be the whole image and then in Photoshop, if you want to crop it to the grid, you can do so. And then you have reference points here for the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and that sort of thing. But you don't want overlap. So that's a video that I'm going to show you soon to avoid that. And also we're going to do this again for better placement. Okay, so let me get out of this. Let's go back and UV texture. Let's look at top. And that's Terran head. Um, let's go ahead again under T and I'm going to, uh, before I do though, I'm going to go ahead and rotate him. So I'm going to hit Y for rotate. And then along the top, I'm going to make sure that he is, his nose is pointing directly along the X plus axis like so, turn off Y, and we're gonna do this again. So this is gonna be Terran head three. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and close this. And so what I wanna do is I wanna create a new map and I'm gonna call it Terran head three. Three. And again, I want it cylindrical on Y axis. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, create up, create map. And it does, it's just a new map created. So now I can close this and I can go from the top view and I can select um, UV texture and now look at it, okay? So now I have, this is my new Terran head three. Now we also have the old Terran head here, but now com compare it to this one. And if I zoom in here, like so, notice how his head is nice and centered. There are little parts of it that stitch up along the back of his head. That's what this is. But that ch by chance is gonna be covered by hair and other things. So we have um, a nice centered mat for us that we can use. But you, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that there are no UVs that are overlap. So you might have to come back in here and manipulate points. Okay, so to manipulate the points, we can go ahead with this map is that I can use under modify, I can use the drag tool and I can click and I can drag any of these points wherever I want. Just make sure that there is no overlap. So I might have to click here and pull that out. You know, click here and pull this out, you know, Make sure that these guys aren't overlapped. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit more difficult to map. But again, what you need to do now is you need to take a screenshot of this and then crop it in Photoshop so that it's just the grid that's visible. And then you can paint inside here or you can use a photograph. And if um, you want in Photoshop, you can use distort or you can use um, liquify and that sort of thing to get it to fit to this distorted image here. 
um, but it will map back on perfectly when you bring it back into LightWave. Okay, so let me go ahead now and I'm going to pause my video, but I'm going to show you some other videos and that will we'll wind up today for that. Um, so that's how that works. So um, let me go back here and let's switch. That's Terran Head. Let's go ahead and save him. And let's go back to Serial Box. Let's go ahead and go back here. We have that because that's a nice finished one that we have to look at. Okay, top view. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and there are some YouTube videos. Uh, we're kind of we're at 1045, so we might only have time for one. I'm going to show you a different way of, um, of unwrapping the box instead of using Atlas. And um, that's a nice video to show. So let me go ahead and do that one. So I'm going to bring this down like so. And I'm going to go back in here. And let's go back. I want basic, it, and it will be saved in our um, YouTube video, um, both under under both of the light wave ones. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to pause the recording, and we're going to play this because this you you have access to it anyway, and it's only 11 minutes, and that will wrap up our our day today. Okay. So I'm going to pause the recording, Zoom recording. So yeah, so there is a different way of unwrapping an existing object. Um, now they're doing a very simple one. It's not as complex as a head. Um, for those of you who have access to 3D scanners, um, it will automatically create a UV map when you, when you scan an object. And that's pretty kind of, that's pretty cool. I've used that in some of my um, uh, my models and renderings, um, but there you have it. That's kind of a, a quick introduction today into UV maps. Um, if um, and again, we'll, we will be using Node Editor uh, a little bit later this semester. Okay, as an introduction to that, which it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, but what I've been doing now with the surface editing is kind of old school before. Um, anyway, uh, just a reminder that you guys should be wrapping up your toy assignment and turning it in. And I will be looking at them this weekend and grading the ones that have been turned in. And um, if you want to run by a final project with me, you can. Um, and then the remainder of the semester will be spent on working on that final project. Um, I'll talk about it more later, um, but it can be pretty much anything you want. It can be an, inter an interior, an exterior, you know, of a building, of an environment. It can be another toy, but something maybe more complex. It can be, but all the examples that you see on my website, and there are lots of, um, again, we'll look at, we'll look those in greater detail later. Okay, so that you need to be thinking about that and turning in your toy assignment. And if you have questions about the toy, please don't hesitate to ask and I can always create a um, uh, a one on one kind of a single webinar or zoom meeting with you if you want some feedback or some uh, help on it. Now, with some of you, you've been having some issues. Have any of you been having issues with the background showing up or not showing up? Anybody? No, because one student is, and I am at a loss. I'm not sure why. I can't get it to fail on mine. So um, anyway, let me go back here and finish taking roll. And then we will be done for today. Um, Delvin is here. And Juan Fernandez is here. And Malik Cassandra. Very 
Garcia is here. Who else? Monica Gomez is here. Okay. So we're all good to go for today. That's it. Okay. Well then um, we'll go ahead and I'll say goodbye and I'll pause uh, my recording and you guys are free to leave and just make sure that you get your toy assignment in and practice the UV maps. And um, next week we will start working on displacement maps. And I'll show you what you can do with those, which are pretty cool. But if you want, if you're thinking of an exterior scene and you want to create a mountain range or hills and valleys and things like that, how to do that, that's pretty neat. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to pause the recording again.